Great. Um, so, as Arthur mentioned, my name is Christops. I'm an integration engineer at Zabbix. And uh, I will talk a bit about uh, monitoring uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure with Zabbix. So this is our newest integration. And actually, in fact, it's so new that it's not released yet. Uh, but it will be released in the upcoming uh, Zabbix 6.0 LTS, 6.4, and also 7.0 beta releases. So when the new releases come, uh, you'll be uh, free to test them, check them out. Uh, but for today, I'll introduce you to these uh, templates and this integration uh, and talk a bit about them. So in total, uh, there we now cover uh, six services from uh, OCI. Uh, these, are, these were selected as the most popular ones, most necessary ones, uh, and I'll just guide you uh, through them with the most important uh, metrics that you uh, can get with them. That doesn't mean uh, that uh, these are the, all the metrics. There's a lot more, but just the important ones. So to start with uh, OCI Compute, these are virtual machines. So of course, it's necessary to monitor your CPU and memory utilization, your disks, and also network. Um, with network, you can monitor the aggregated uh, network traffic that's coming in and out, but also we do a discovery of uh, virtual network interface cards. Uh, that means if you have multiple cards attached, you can monitor the state or the traffic coming in and out of them individually by the network interface. Uh, then for the autonomous databases, uh, another popular service with Oracle, of course, uh, you will be able to monitor those sessions and connections, uh, writes and reads for the tables, uh, the storage utilization, as well as the CPU that is powering everything uh, there. Then uh, next up is object storage. These, these are your buckets. These are This is where your files are stored. Uh, there you'll be able to see your size of the bucket, uh, the object count that's in there. Uh, latency for your users when they are in the uh, accessing those files, as well as some errors that might have occurred, uh, for example, in uploads. For virtual cloud networks, uh, there are not a lot of metrics because the most uh, of uh, those metrics are handled already by those network interface cards that are stored uh, under the compute service, basically. So. For virtual cloud networks, we only monitor, uh, we discover them, monitor their state, uh, discover subnets that are attached to this particular cloud network and also monitor uh, subnet state. Then uh, for those uh, volumes, we have block and boot volumes. Uh, both of these have the same metrics. So they've been put together here, uh, but they are a separate uh, services monitored. Um, there you can see their states, also uh, different metrics about the reads and writes and guaranteed uh, operations, uh, and also uh, about throttled operations. In total, uh, that's it for now, uh, but that doesn't mean there won't be any service added in the future. That's uh, up to you as Zabbix users. If you're using OCI uh, and you wish to see some service here that's being monitored, uh, you can you you can be you can uh, create new uh, feature requests in our ticketing system uh, to have it just documented so we can see uh, see your uh, wishes and can implement them and also maybe extending those extend uh, already existing services that are mentioned here. So um, these are the six services, uh, but uh, what about their structure? Uh, those services are covered by seven templates. Uh, so you don't have to configure each and every template to discover that particular resource. There is the main template called Oracle Cloud by HTTP, and you would assign it to a host. And everything about 90% that you would do uh, is through this uh, template and through a single host. So once you apply to a host, you will see there are six discoveries, uh, a discovery for each of the services we support. Um, Every of these discoveries will uh, discover uh, your resources individually. So if you have uh, three compute instances running in Oracle, it will discover each of them separately and add them as a separate host that happens with uh, host prototypes 
uh, functionality in Zabbix. And then host prototypes create the hosts that you, you have in your OCI environment. Um, and to actually see how, how it looks, uh, here are some screenshots from Zabbix. Um, here you would configure, this is your master host, OCI. Uh, you can name it however you want. It has six discoveries and it has a template uh, Oracle Cloud by HTTP assigned to it. Uh, then this is how uh, those discoveries look. In total, six discoveries, uh, each having one host prototype. And once these uh, discoveries will be executed, uh, you will see your host uh, view being populated by all of those services you have in your Oracle Cloud environment. For example, I had two autonomous databases and each of those are added as a separate host. Uh, same for every other resource as a block volume, boot volume, two buckets, a compute instance, and also one virtual cloud network. These hosts also, uh, they have their own metrics that they cover, triggers, graphs, and also dashboards. And separating these uh, resources in the, in the separate hosts gives us nice uh, functionality and management that we can also create uh, automatic uh, dashboards that are implemented inside of the template already. For example, every autonomous database will have its own dashboard where you can see its own metrics in a nice way. For example, if we look at uh, this particular uh, computer instance, uh, it will have a dashboard like this. Um, these services, uh, dashboards are built to see all of your data that's uh, happening with this uh, resource. For example, with compute instance, uh, there is a dashboard with multiple pages. So there's a main page which gives you an overview. For example, here is the, with the green ones, you can see your disks. Uh, then the red ones are a uh, network and blue ones are utilization of your research such as CPU and memory. Then the further on in those pages, uh, they go into more detail. Uh, for example, for CPU, you have the CPU widget and also graph where you can see historic values and goes for memory. And for interface cards as well, um, the red ones are the aggregated traffic uh, for the whole compute instance that uh, also is represented here by the top graphs. On the left side, it's the ingress traffic and uh, on the right side, it's the egress traffic. Uh, so there's the graphs about the aggregated network traffic and on the bottom here, these two graphs are represent those interface cards. If you have multiple interface cards, you will be able to scroll to these graphs and see uh, independent traffic graphs. Uh, that's about that. So uh, about OCI configuration here, I must say that uh, there will be detailed documentation available once the templates uh, are released uh, into the release branches. Uh, and also uh, there is a blog post. It will be also launched when the templates are merged. So it, everything there goes through each and every step on how to configure OCI, how to configure Zabbix with screenshots and examples. Uh, here in this presentation, I will just go through uh, the major four steps you have to do in the Oracle Cloud uh, that you have an understanding of. So first step is to create a monitoring user. You should do this to have a security, have a secure platform because uh, you will assign this user to only specific resources. Uh, once you do this, uh, for uh, once you create a monitoring user, you should generate its API keys. Their Oracle will uh, give you uh, an option to download an SSH key. Uh, you should do it uh, because that will be used for authentication in Zabbix. And also it will uh, show you something similar uh, to what you see on the bottom here. These are the credentials for authentication. You will use everything here also in Zabbix so uh, you should save those uh, credentials as well. So when you got everything there, uh, you have uh, your access ready, but once you do uh, requests, you'll see that those requests are rejected. Um, 
So we need to give uh, permissions to this user. Uh, and to simplify the process, in case in future you want to add more monitoring users, we should create a group uh, where we assign those users. And then once you want to add another monitoring user, you will just assign it to group and everything will work. Um, so then you create a group specifically for monitoring users. And in the group, you for that group, you create a user policy. This policy gives access to only of those metrics that Zabbix needs for it to function for all these services that are covered. Uh, here you can see it's uh, to allow group named Zabbix Mon in this case to only read some specific resource. And that goes for everything. It's only read access. It doesn't give more permissions than uh, it needs to. But everything here will be explained in blog posts and and also documentation and step by step so you can follow along it easily. Then about advanced LLD filtering, um, this is something that's been implemented in uh, this Oracle template that's not usually uh, encountered in other templates that we do. Uh, so I'll show you uh, how it works and how to modify it. But uh, first uh, I'll, I'll show you how it usually is being done in uh, in our official templates and also in Oracle templates right now they're uh, being used. Uh, so on the left side, uh, we can imagine we have a JSON object. Uh, this is how, how Zabbix uh, discovery rules want these objects to look like, basically an array of different objects. So here we have uh, OCI instances. We have test instance one, two, and three, and some more data regarding to it. Uh, usually, uh, the filtering would be done through user macros. Um, you might have seen them, might have used them. They usually look like this. They end with matches or uh, not matches. Um, and if we want, for example, to monitor only test instance two, we do not want to monitor test instance one and three because they are not relevant to us. Uh, you would uh, just set find the user macro, you would open up the host, go to macros tab uh, and find user macro that you want. For example, OCI compute name matches and you would set its value to two if you want to discover all of the instances whose name uh, consists of uh, character uh, two. So then it would look like this, only the test instance two would be discovered. Um, However, this might not work well when you uh, want to discover some instances by their usage, for example. Uh, if you, let's say you have web servers and you have development uh, environment uh, instances, you maybe don't want to uh, monitor those development environment instances because they're being tested. It's okay if their CPU gets to 100%, some developers doing something, it's okay. We just want to focus on the web servers. In this case, you would need to go and modify the name of the instance to include something like web server. And then you could uh, use this uh, method to filter out, but it's not the best. Uh, usually the biggest cloud providers already have uh, functionality of how to organize resources and that's usually uh, tags. So, uh, Oracle has freeform tags, um, which are which we can use for this advanced filtering uh, of resources. Uh, in Oracle, it looks something like this. You open up your resource, uh, say that you press the button that you want to add tags, set the tag to be a freeform tag, and then enter some key and value for this tag. Uh, in this case, we'll add we'll filter um, instances by their usage. So we'll add a key usage and a value of whatever this instance is doing. So web server, for example. As you see right now, the tags on the left side is empty because there are no tags assigned. But if when we do assign those freeform tags, uh, Zabbix uh, integration already does all the hard work for you. It gets the tags if they exist and formats them as needed. So when we add the tags, its tags should look like this. Test instance one and three uh, has now a tag of web server and test instance two is a development environment uh, tag usage. So how to configure it? What you would do is you would open up in this case, if you're um, 
filtering compute instances, you would open up the main template, go to the compute discovery, uh, and uh, press on the LLD macros tab. There would be already some uh, of those LLD macros, but you would add another one. Uh, in this case, we you can name it however you want, but in this case, we'll name it usage because we want to uh, filter it by usage and then give JSON path to it. Uh, this is what Zabbix uh, uses to find what exactly what exact value to assign it. So it would take the first object and search for tags, and then it would expect another object to be inside their uh, name uh, with a key usage. There is a key usage, and then uh, it takes the value that is here and assigns it to this macro. It's essentially a variable, uh, and it does for every other object. Then the other step that you have to go uh, do is to go to the filters tab right there in the same window uh, and specify that you want to filter uh, your uh, instances by the usage macro and filter only those uh, that match uh, the string of web server. And then what would happen uh, next time it executes the discovery, it would only filter out those uh, instances that have a tag of web server. And this is a great way on how to do this filtering. You do not have to alter the names of those instances. And if you are running in your organization uh, already uh, an OCI, some, some of those resources, uh, you already should have some guidelines regarding uh, those uh, freeform tag usage. So most likely you already have such tags implemented uh, in all of your uh, resources and you can just use them, use do, do those two steps just to add it to this functionality to Zabbix and everything will happen uh, automatically. Uh, one thing to note here is that uh, these tags, if you set Zabbix macro to search for tags usage, this usage tag has to be present in every single resource of that type. Uh, let it be autonomous database. Uh, if you try to filter autonomous databases or block volume for block volumes, um, but every single resource, for example, here, compute instances, every single compute instance needs to have this tag. Uh, else, if it's missing, uh, Zabbix will check here usage is, usage is, here it also is, but for example, in fourth instance, it's not present. This tag hasn't been added. Uh, Zabbix will stop the discovery uh, of compute instances and will uh, give out an error message that uh, couldn't find this uh, tag. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't need to have a value. It just needs to exist. Um, you can do this using APIs or some CLI tools to automatically just get the list of all of your resources, take those IDs and use some post requests to add those freeform tags. Uh, but uh, yeah, those have to exist. And yeah, you can use this functionality on almost everything. I think the only exception was network interface cards. Uh, those didn't have this freeform tag functionality, but everything else, yeah, you can use it. Um, and yeah, that's it from me. Uh, again, blog post will be uh, ready to explain everything in more detail about this if you have some confusion uh, and also, yeah, template documentation. So thank any, any questions? Thank you a lot, Kristaps. Uh, we didn't have any questions, but we did have comments about people actually looking forward to using this quite a bit. Um, so we'll probably have more questions once people get their hands on the template. And then we can follow forums, um, ZBX next uh, or whatever else for questions, comments, um, yeah, and sure. yeah, feature requests. Thank you.